two paintings in line and wash or pen and wash, um, whichever way you look at it. I'll, I'll cover the different materials very, very shortly. I'm going to be doing two paintings on this demo. The first one is this one, which is Trier. I think it's pronounced Trier in Germany. And a, a fairly dreary day. Incidentally, all of the, the both your subjects are from our source library on Patreon, where there's many, many other photographs to to inspire you to paint. This one is from kindly shared by Suzanne, I believe, and Trier Marketplace Trier in Germany. Quite a complex scene with all those background buildings, all of those windows. Um, I was going to say hundreds of them, but nearly nearly a hundred windows, uh, loads of windows. Uh, not too difficult with the perspective. There's a little bit of perspective with the canopy of this um, the, the, these market stalls here, and there's some bunches of grapes as well. Incidentally, also you've got the source photo button on the on the on the Crowdcast uh, screen here. If you if you find that green source photo button, if you haven't done so already. I have mentioned the and uh, referenced these source photos a few times on Patreon, but you can download them there. And I will also reference them in the description of the follow up posting for those of you not listening live. So you can download these photos. I'm going to be referencing them as I go through the demo on this simple little board here, print them out. Um, yeah, so market stores and lots and lots of people. A rainy day. Not many shadows to deal with, but perhaps we can get in a little bit of light hitting the top of this canopy here and maybe the tops of people's heads and, a, and an umbrella over on the right hand side. Also, maybe a little bit of light hitting the left hand side of that church tower. So that's the first one I'm going to do. The next one fingers crossed, is split in Croatia. And this one was shared by, has been shared by Hans. More of a sunny day. Uh, quite an atmospheric sky. Excuse the lines on my printer. This is my my printer. It, that's not actually, not actually in the photograph. So excuse those horizontal lines there. A little bit more tricky with the perspective and trying to get the character of the old buildings, some shutters as well, some open, some closed. Then there's this little uh, street cafe here, this tavern, shadows going across the scene. And yes, again, uh, a few more figures there. All right, so there's the two that I'm gonna do. And we'll start off with this one, Trier in, in Germany. Paper I'm using is watercolour paper. This is Lang's, I think it's Langton watercolour paper. It's cold press, £140. So it's the normal sort of weight I use, slightly smaller than normal uh, because I'm doing these, these two fairly quick um, demonstration paintings uh, for you. The colours on my palette, I'll come on to that when I start painting. Now, the first one I'm going to do. I'm going to use a more of a, a traditional dip pen. So in other words, I'm going to be dipping this in some ink. There we are, some Indian ink. Hopefully not have too many accidents with that. And <clears throat> because I've got to keep dipping the pen, there'll be a constant replenishing the uh, the, the nib with, with ink and then doing a few lines and then thing it up again so there will be a little bit of toing and froing it does does tend to just destroy the sort of momentum the the uh the 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 sort of uh process of doing of doing the drawing but you get a nice effect with um with this uh dip pen and you can actually get them with lots of different um nibs so this is a a joseph gillett pen or Gilot or Gilor, I'm not sure if it's a, a UK or French name. And there's loads of other, loads of other nibs. I'm just using the default one that comes with this pen, but there's loads of other nibs there to alter the the line thickness and the, I guess the capacity um, 
line style of of your sketching so there's some drawing uh, various drawing nibs in there the second painting i'm going to be doing i'll revert to probably more popular um pens uh waterproof pens and uh do that split scene okay right uh let me just check if there's any questions before we proceed um okay betty is asking how how to know how much lined or how much use of pen i like a lot of drawing work but question mark well yes i think we're going to keep the drawing to a minimum i think with this scene um things like the shadows you i suppose you could do some cross hatching to create some dark areas but people gen generally tend to um, not use too much cross hatching in, in a line and wash painting or indeed draw in the edges of shadows so they'll they'll use of course watercolor and a range of values to to depict those those dark areas so there's going to be a, a balance i think as regards to the amount of pen work that we're doing um second question from betty some people say that not everything should be colored some should be left black and white is this a good idea well the, the some of the paper will be left white the lighter areas maybe not too much in our first one uh, but yes uh, as per a normal watercolor you're going to leave some of the paper maybe unpainted for that uh, those those lighter areas and then as regards black do you mean like darker values well yes um, when we have very dark values then we will be using appropriate um, darker colors to depict those those darker shadows so hopefully that um, answers your question betty all right let's make a start then dip pen indian ink try not to spill it and i'll just put it in my palette there just in case i do knock it over now you could if you've never done pen and wash before you might want to pencil in the main lines first of all i'm diving straight into it trying to keep it nice and fresh with directly with the uh, with my dip pen here but by all means you could start off by doing a pencil drawing first of all uh, and then and then draw over those pencil lines with with your pen maybe then erase those pencil lines before using the wash before painting you could do it that round wet that way around and i do know of some people that may paint first and then draw in the lines later on trying to emphasize the the edges of objects the edges of shapes you could do it that way around i'm going to do it probably the more normal way pen first wash painting second all right so there'd be plenty of dipping going on and you don't want to dip it in too much here i'm going to start on the left hand side with the top edge of the canopy and it rises slightly and it comes down a little bit into the corner and then going back to the top edge gradually receding probably over to the sort of two-thirds mark something like that now just continue on here we've got the side panels of the canopy a sort of wavy line to that and you don't sort of notice too much of a wavy line on the right hand side and then it sort of continues down into the distance with different sections to the end all right let's now 
get in the bottom where the market where the market produce is and thinking about the perspective the where the grapes are there's some grapes in here some red grapes and some green grapes so just just to reference the photo so i've done the top canopy we're now doing the the actual market stores themselves and get in the top again don't worry about having a particularly straight line and then there's a little gap here where there's some people going through a gap between the stalls at the back of the stall there's some boxes some empty some full of some extra produce and then these grapes just a little indication of something going on there and then maybe some more trays going down into the distance now down to street level And there's this sort of, I guess it's like a sheet that's just draped over the, the side there just to make it fairly neat and tidy. Now let's do the background. So I need to be careful here. This is drying quite quickly. Indian ink doesn't take an awful long time to dry. Um, over in the over on the left hand side we can just about see tops of some houses go down the street like that and there's some gable windows just showing through and then these complex buildings and there's one, two, three, four, five, there's six buildings at the end and they're, they're all different widths. There's about four or five the same height. Most of them are, the bottom of the roofs are that kind of level there. So you do get some nice sort of organic lines with with a dip pen as you as you press harder you're going to get a thicker line then you you lift it off a little bit you get a thinner line so that's quite nice to create those those quite nice organic lines let's just get the widths of the buildings right first of all so there's one there And there's another one there. And then there's a another one there. Then a pinkish one here. And then there's a, a sort of lavender one there and a taller building there quite a complex front to the facade to that building and then just on the right hand side we can just see a little bit of the left hand side of the market um, a brighter building down there <clears throat> so 
next some rooftops to these and they've got little sort of flat tops to most of them something like that and then the church at the back I was 50 50 uh, thinking whether I should include the church but as it's there um, let's get it in and it just slopes down ever so slightly So there, and we've got to get in the left-hand side of the tower. And then the right-hand side. And there's little sort of turrets in the corners. And like that, there's a spire just at the other end. Like that. Let's get in a few windows. So um some in the rooftops and they don't need to be perfect rectangles just a sort of very quick window shape i'll gradually work my way down now back to this left hand one and there's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Next one, there's four. And then four below that. We can just see a few more there. This little one's got some nice timber work. on the front and then a few windows lower down then the pink house has got three rows of four windows it's going to drive you mad all these windows one two, three rows, and then this lavender one's got three. Again, there's three rows. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then the larger building at the end's also got three. Three windows. building on the right hand side I'll do that in a minute <coughs> excuse me let's put some stripes on the canopy so on the side panel
not perfectly parallel, just introduce a few little twists and turns in those. You never can tell when you dip your pen in how, how long the ink's going to last. But uh, half the fun, and then there's a few more little stripes down there. Then there are a few little stripes running across the top. Now, I need to be a bit more careful with these. Like that. And the stripes, I think I'm gonna have the, the stripes on the lower part of the market stalls, they're horizontal. I'm gonna have them vertical. Just make it a little bit more consistent with the top. And then up the side. And as we go into the distance, we'll make them a little bit narrower. Excuse the scratching sound. Obviously that's the, the nib on the rough surface. Okay, I think it's time for some people. Right, thinking about the figures in the scene and where Suzanne took the photograph, photograph from, look at the heights of the figures. They're all, the, the, the tops of their heads are pretty much all in line. And then the, the size of the figures then will make them appear closer or further away. Try and avoid, just be careful when you're doing nearby figures, not to have their heads lower than the figures further away. Otherwise, it makes it look as if we're, we're looking down on the scene. So the heights of the figures, there is a fairly tall guy here, but the heights of the figures are generally sort of around about there. So let's get in some figures i'm just making these up you could copy those in the photograph maybe this person's got a pram or something or a push chair uh, get another figure in here Let's get in some larger figures, first of all. And then we can paint. We can draw in the, the further figures behind these. Now, Get a few more in here, a few more there, and we're nearly done. Of 
course, it looks like it's winter, so they're they're they've all got fairly warm clothing on. A few more figures in here. I think we need some more in the distance here. There we are, that'll do. Right, let's just fill in now some of the the, uh, the buildings just here. There's a sort of entrance there. Let's get in a few more distant figures. There's some arched windows at the street level. There's a parasol or something on the side there. Right, this side building, I just need to be very careful with the perspective. So there's a a few lines that are just sort of describing, denoting where the different levels are. Uh, right, what else? Ah. Church tower. There are a few windows on the church tower. First of all, get in the, the different levels there and two at the top, two slightly narrow ones there, and then to two pairs of windows there and then on the church roof itself there are it looks like very tiny triangular windows something like that There we go. <clears throat> I think I'm done on the drawing. I'm not going to draw in the, the cobblestones on the on the ground there. Keep it fairly plain. It's a wet day, so uh, we have to maybe try and think of some soft edges there and uh, maybe a few little little sort of reflections of the figures. Uh, there are some details over here. We can see the far side of the canopy just or it might be another market stall in the distance over here and then there are some fences or something like that at the back of that market right <coughs> excuse me um let's just put in just a few more little grapes and things and fruit or whatever is in this market here just just a sort of impression of something in there and there we are um that's it done a nice sort of loose drawing uh this one in in indian ink let me just put the top on before i have an accident and of course, it's always a good idea to clean off that nib in, in clear water as soon as you can so it doesn't all clog up. Um, I'll do that later. 
Right, let me just see if there's any questions before I go on and add a wash to the drawing. Right. Uh, Lydia, looks like you have a new palette. Yes, the old palette. Um, the I had a, a Holbein aluminium palette, very similar to this one. Um, this is a cheaper variety. The Holbein I used for about 12 years. And the, the enamel eventually came off. I did try and spray it myself, but it didn't work too well. The, the paint, when I started using it again, the paint kind of soaked into, soaked into that paint. And I had to, I had to uh, bite the bullet and uh, go and get a new palette. So this one's a, a sort of clone, I think, of, it's even got the H logo there. Um, a cheap one I got on Amazon, but it, it's, it's all right. Uh, it's, uh, I, I quite like these these metal palettes and I like the the um, paint wells as well with the open side because as I use the brush so as I want a, a kind of weak wash I will drag the brush that way so they're not there's just it's enclosed on three sides open on this side so it just makes it easier to drag the brush out that's why I like these palettes so yeah new palette right Let's just see if this is dry. Well, it's still a little bit wet there. So I'm going to get out my hairdryer. Excuse a little bit of noise just to speed up the process. And we'll go through this, um, this wash. Hang on a second. Particularly got to dry there. And there. I think this little bit is refusing to dry. Let me just see if I can mop it up with a, a damp brush. Of course, you could use, rather than a, a dip pen, you could use a very small, thin brush to apply those lines. I think it's dry now so let's add in a wash i'm going to use a mop brush for this and generally probably a weaker wash than than if, if i was doing a normal sort of watercolor i want to try and make these these washes transparent so that we can see the the actual line drawing a little bit more clearly so not too thick with the paint the colors i've got here on my palette i've got neutral tint burnt amber burnt sienna yellow ochre <clears throat> excuse me viridian green cobalt green cerulean blue cobalt blue ultramarine blue uh amazon crimson cadmium red light red cadmium orange and cad yellow and then lavender these colors are from jackman's art materials they're handmade they're quite good quality uh, but obviously that there's other makes um available always try and get a, the, the best quality paints you can let's start with the sky and 
it's a fairly gloomy sky, isn't it? Uh, but there is a little bit of light that's coming through. Again, excuse these lines from my printer. So let's add in. I'm just picking up anything from the palette and just just picking off that that color I had previously now to mix in a sort of grayish sky I would use maybe not a cobalt perhaps an ultramarine blue and a bit of burnt umber but a blue and a little bit of burnt umber would be a a good combination and then maybe we'll go a little bit lighter again up to the edge of the tower and then over on the right hand side up to the edge of the buildings just mop up any any bead we've got but we want to be fairly loose fairly quick with those with that wash of the sky a little bit of granulation going on doesn't matter excuse the glare um, that will obviously go away when it when it starts to dry okay uh next let's do these buildings here starting with a little bit of a a red for the first building and down to the edge of the canopy there's a pinkish one here so I'll use a little bit of weak adders and crimson for this and paint around the windows fairly loose and then the building next tap let's choose a little bit of lavender here for this one and then the one to the right of that so this one here is what color would you describe that a sort of dullish cream color i think um so so what can we let's choose a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of that color we use for the clouds down to the parasol let's keep that quite bright here we are um buildings on the left hand side just beyond the the canopy there um it's over on the left hand side not too much detail something dark a little bit of aloes and crimson perhaps a bit of burnt sienna burnt sienna aloes and crimson a 
not too thick because we want to show some of those lines through it. There we go. Down to the canopy now and not painting the blue stripes. I'll do that towards the end. But just the shadow of the the side panels that um, so the lights hitting the top, but not so much, not so much on the side. And then these canopies go a sort of greenish color. Pick up a bit of viridian, a bit of greenish color down towards the end. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Um, produce in on the market store, we've got some. Um, Red, grapes, and then we've got some green grapes. So um, pick up a little bit of green here. A few more, a few more greenish veg veggies down towards the end. And now just continue on with the, <clears throat> the side panel here. It doesn't matter these colors run into each other. It's part of the charm of the watercolor and the wash just to keep it fairly loose. Just let it do its own thing. Now the ground, let's go in with a fairly dark, it's quite light there, it's darker there, light, and then a little bit darker here. So uh, a warmish, Burnt Sienna, I think. Add a little bit of Ultra in blue, just to make it go a little bit darker. So keep it light there in the middle and then go a little bit darker on the right hand side. And then just underneath the canopy, it does get a little bit darker over there. And let's get in some of the other buildings. So I've got to do these two here in the middle. Let's go where it's a bit more like a lavender color for that one. And then 
more of that sort of creamish color. For the next one, likewise, the church tower has that sort of creamish color as well. Here we are. <clears throat> and rooftops. So I'll start with a church. So notice I'm doing this in sections and just letting each section dry as best I can before painting the next object that goes, that's up against it. So. Let's just go in with a little bit of a sort of a, a, a sort of slateish colour, cobalt blue, a little bit of burnt sienna. like that. There's a darkish little triangle of rooftop there. Um, and then there's a sort of nice trim around that front there. I think I'll, that brush now is a little bit too big. I need to resort to a slightly smaller brush for more of the other details. Right, let's get in the blue stripes of this market stall. And what blue will that be? I think that's going to be a cobalt blue. Let's go with a, a cobalt. And I'm using a, a number eight round brush for this one. So there are a few very thin little stripes on that far side and then on this nearer side. So I'm just painting between these lines. Hopefully that will give the desired effect. like that. And then make sure this is dry. So just following those narrowing lines in there and then the bottom section a bit more water so this has got a good edge to it as well thinner lines more closely together over into the distance. Right, figures. And the things that are going on in the distance there, 
Well, there are these boxes. Like that. Make this little bit of the canopy a little bit darker. And figures, they're, they're all, <clears throat> of course, they're all, they're generally darker, darker clothing, but there's some reds, blues, greys. So that's generally the, the colours that we've got. Um, let's pick up a little bit of red, first of all, and add in a few red cloth figures. Now, just try and be fairly random with um, the uh, choice of red, maybe a blue, let's choose that cobalt, a little bit of ultra in blue. And then a, a browny black, so burnt sienna, a little bit of neutral tint. Not too thick with the with the uh, colours. Well, I've got this colour, let's do a few of their heads as well. So I'm just basically following these lines. Hopefully the the initial drawing was fairly convincing as regards the shapes of some of these figures. It's a little bit of shadow under here. Going a little bit darker there. Try and get in a soft edge as we go into the um, the area where everyone's walking. a few more legs in there in the distance in the gap and then in this area here that's too light so <clears throat> I'm just going to darken it up a little bit with neutral tint and ultramarine blue. And 
and I need to make these windows a little bit so the rooftop's a little bit darker. Neutral tint, ultramarine blue, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna, but it's going to be darker than that church roof behind. There we are, and we've got the the trim of this building, then just a few windows. And then a few windows here. Those arch windows and Then maybe just a few little dark bits in some of the buildings just to reinforce the uh, sort of image of those windows. And finally, just underneath this canopy here, there's a little bit of these distant canopies. There's a little bit of darkness <clears throat> um, that just comes up to these figures. And it's the, it's the sort of, underneath of those canopies in the distance. As a final, final thing, maybe I put in just a few little lines on the pavement here, just to maybe a few little, just a few little lines, just to help lead the eye into the composition. And then maybe a few little horizontal ones. I did do this with a, a thin brush. There we are. Painting number one done. Trier in Germany, maybe quite ambitious to to do this one as the first one quite a, a complex scene and deliberately kept it loose and i, I think uh, the the indian ink it's a very strong dark black color so it, it does show really well through um that that wash of that watercolor even if you go over quite thick it still sort of shows it st still shows through 
uh, maybe this could be a little bit darker here just on the edge of that produce okay um, that's number one done I shall just remove this and then we'll go on to the second one a sunnier scene in split um, let me just see if there's any questions I don't think so So those of you that have kept up with me, how have you got on? Oh, I did forget the church a little bit. Let's do this church tower. And then those little tiny turrets windows there we go and this little spire at the end as well i've missed out the w <laughs> i missed out the wc sign didn't think it really added anything to it Right, there we are. That's the first one. I'll tape up the my second sheet. If you just bear with me. Let's get this next one in. Right about there. Next one then is split in Croatia. Thanks very much, Hans, for your kind sharing of your lovely photograph. So a little bit more sunny than the last um, painting. And maybe from a perspective point of view, we've got a little bit more to, to think about here with the angle of the rooftops there and the street level. Um, and then on the left-hand side, the angle of the, the little gaps between the bricks there and the lines leading up the street. We've got a few more figures to deal with, not so many as the last one, but a lot more light. The light's coming from the, the top left-hand corner, so it's, it's creating a lot of light across the street and a bit more contrast to, to play with as well. So uh, how will we do that with, with uh, this next line of wash? With this painting, I'm going to go to... I'm going to use a more popular... Uh, woodproof pens rather than the dip pen on the first one and there are quite a few ones that you can use uh, here's a paper make pen it's got a fairly sort of stiff nib obviously there are different thicknesses so that's a 0.5 uh, you could use the old sharpie so that's a fine point one there uh, then I've got a a waterproof calligraphy pen with two different types of thicknesses of nib either end gives you a sort of italic flat um, style um, uh, line the one i'm going to use though is this pigma pen from sakura japanese pen i think they're quite popular with urban sketches uh, it's quite a popular brand and you get them in different nib thicknesses so i don't know whether you can see on the cap of the nib there i've got fb mb fine or medium i've got a a bold here somewhere there you are bb i think the the bb for me is a little bit too thick for the size of paper i'm using i'm going to go with the medium one uh purely because my my thinner one is is sort of losing a little bit of its ink i'm running a bit low on the ink there on that one so we'll go with the uh the mb medium right on the left so let's just review this so on the left hand side we've got a nice framing of that wall 
then the perspective of the buildings going down into the street in the background, the, the slight angle of that parasol, and then these two main houses here, not so many windows, but these, these lovely shutters and trying to, trying to create the, the feeling of the, these old bricks here, different colors, different intensities of brown and warmth, light hitting these shop blinds just above the, the entrances. And then a few figures dotted around. I might have a um, couple of figures here and then a few more over here. These, th these figures in the photograph, they're too far over on the right. So I'm gonna try and imagine a, a better grouping of figures to help the composition. So starting from the left-hand side, well, I've started already. <laughs> Let's just continue on that line. Um, this framing down the left-hand side of the that wall. I'm going to ignore, there's some table and chairs down here in the bottom left-hand corner. I'm going to ignore those. They don't, um, looks like a lovely place to sit, but I'm going to ignore those from a, a composition point of view. The main focus is, is here and trying to get the the feeling of light coming into the scene. All right, so we've got the continuation of the buildings on the left-hand side. And then a few more buildings further over. Coming out from the cafe, there's like an, an awning or a, an extended roof. And then we've got the Parasol, this large parasol, not too steep. Now this pen is a medium thickness. I'm trying to use it quite lightly so I can get some thinner lines, but obviously if you if you press down, press down heavy, you get a thicker line. So you can alternate the uh, the thickness of these lines a little bit with that uh, pressure. And then underneath we've got the shadow and a few more parasols going into the back. It's very complicated, very complex here. Quite difficult from the photograph to see what is actually going on. There's a, a balcony here and some buildings going on, um, I guess on the right hand side of the street as we go down that alleyway. But let me try and simplify that a little bit. So, a few more buildings there on that right-hand side of the street. And now the two main buildings. So, there's the first one there. So, the bottom of the roof is that sort of angle and right in the middle of that roof there's this gable window and the angle against the roof this is actually quite a steep roof and then down to the street level and then the next building. I'm trying to make these these houses just a little bit narrower as well than the image just just so that I can get an, on the right hand side the impression of the alleyway over there uh, on the right just to to counterbalance the this sturdy wall on the left so it, it sort of frames the the composition there on that side this next house too has a a gable window coming out from the roof like a, a, a dormer window not sure what the correct architectural term is and right hand side 
of the building further up the street we can just see a brightly lit building there and just the impression of a few little buildings on the immediate right hand side of that alleyway coming down oh let's get some get in some windows well we've got four here and there's two more there and two here and some larger ones on the first level and some shop lines uh, lines over the entrance of the shops now the actual street level looks to be fairly level but before i draw in this let me just get in a few figures starting with over on the left hand side this looks fairly bare this side so i'm going to get in a couple of figures on here now with the figures try and find a reference point all of these figures the heights of the heads are all the same pretty much so this this girl this this guy uh, they're all in a similar sort of horizontal level even these figures further there on the left hand side uh, maybe not that 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 person far up in the alleyway but do you see what i mean and and then find a reference point they're just sort of below the bottom of the the blind there just to start with um one of those so just below the just below the bottom of the blind and we're drawing a couple of figures so maybe one in there and then another one as well and let's get now to balance those two let's have one about here so again thinking about the heights of the heads all right maybe another couple smaller figures could perhaps they're coming just coming out from the alleyway or they're just about to go up go up the alleyway so something like that now just below the canopy of the cafe we've got to sort of um, some planters and coming down a little bit like that there's a menu here of course got to have a menu it makes it look a little bit more authentic and then it terminates about there and then it, it goes back to the front of the cafe we've got the lines of the the these bricks the the gaps between the bricks and that's going to help just look at the perspective of that and the angle so it's almost 45 degrees there that as it comes down it's almost horizontal here which is going to be where the heights of the heads are and then it starts to turn back the other way so that would be a horizontal line there but then as we go further up we're going to go a little bit more of an angle like that and there are a few little lines going up the street as well just to help with the definition of the the pavement the street and then a few lines going in the other direction like that just a few not to over clutter it have i got everything so just to recap 
the main shapes of the houses. The oh, there are a few windows in these extensions here. Maybe there's an aerial or two. Um, some cabling running between the houses. So I think that's it. All right, now down to then laying a few washes on top of this. So again, I will use my soft mop brush, squirrel mop brush. Now th this sky, that's a cool sky contrasting with the warm buildings. Let's try and capture that with a fairly cool sky yet. There's, there's these ominous um, gray clouds up there. I'm gonna use a little bit of altering blue and burnt sienna for these clouds. And starting from the left-hand side and the side of that wall, Keep it fairly light in the middle as per the photo. Then continue down to the tops of the buildings. So down to the gap in the middle. And then there's some more, some darker clouds here. Just trying to alternate the, the strength of this sky wash. Just losing another hair there. Just alternating the strength of that, that wash. So dark in some places, a little bit lighter in others. Trying to create the impression of these soft clouds. And then as we come down into the alleyway, it goes, it goes a lot darker. like that, just mop up a little bit of that bead. There we go, and those bits there as well. Next, just the undercoat, um, a wash applied across the, the buildings and the ground. I'll go in with the shadow wash after that, but this will just be the, the uh, the initial sort of undercoat, but it will be the final color of those bright buildings facing us. So I'll just wash off my my dark my dark cloud mixture. Now, what color for this? Well, we've got all sorts of warms going on, ochres, but um, burnt sienna little bit of red in there as well. So something warm. I could even use, I could even use a little bit of cadmium orange, a bit of light red. Starting on the left hand side, but this will be darker. All right, this is just the undercoat on this side. Alice and Crimson for good measure. OK, 
down over the cafe. Bit of cadmium orange to warm things up even more. I'm going to paint around the figures and around the canopy. Keep the canopy light. I know it's brown in the in the photo, but it's a similar. It's a similar value to the the buildings. So let's create a little bit of contrast by keeping the parasol bright. Let's continue on with this wash. That's a little bit of burnt sienna in there. So around these figures. The, f the actual pavement looks quite shiny, sort of like a, almost like a, a marble colour. And I'll keep, I'll keep the, the light where it's hitting the street here, I'll keep that unpainted just for maximum contrast. Let's add a little bit of blue in there, a bit of that sky mix. Bit of pink, bit of Addison crimson. Just mop up that bead there. Okay, now continuing on the other side. There's that building, then. The next building along, carefully paint around the parasol. A bit too red. Now, down to the shop lines. Underneath the parasols, around the figures. And then down to the street level. Paint around those figures there. There are a few buildings that are sort of more yellowish. Yellow, yellow ochre. So I'll just wash my brush and pick up a little bit of yellow, yellow ochre. Uh, this one here, for example, this is quite bright. Maybe that's just a little bit too light. And then on the far side of the street, Perhaps some of these buildings are as well. I could have actually brought that in just a little bit more, that side. Okay, just mop up this bottom here just a little bit more. Don't want that paint going back into the, going back into the painting and creating any sort of untidy blooms at the bottom there. Right. Um, I'm going to now just dry this a little bit with my hair dryer. Hang on a second.
somehow back to a different brush, back to my size eight uh, synthetic round brush for, let me think now, for the rooftops. And they're, they're going to be that sort of terracotta red. So a warmer color, a little bit darker than the walls of the buildings. So a little bit of my capium red, maybe a bit of, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of light red in there as well. And if it's too bright, maybe just cool it down a bit with a tiny bit of a blue. So there's a little bit of a roof there. One there and then other side of the street. One there. Maybe there's a few more down there. And then these houses there. And just a little slither of a roof there. Right, next, uh, I'll get in this hedge here. All these, there's some um, lots of various plants growing in these planters, just creating a, a border there for a screening for the cafe. A green for this, a Viridian green, and a little bit of burnt sienna, creates a nice sort of foliage green. It is actually, the, the green is actually quite dark on the, on the left hand side. Again, try not to be too thick, too opaque with the colour. Try and keep it fairly transparent, not too not too dark, maybe it goes a little bit darker. Pick up a bit of blue, darker towards the base where we've got the planters. And then a little bit of greenery between the figures. And a darker base again. Up to the end there. Right. Shutters. Well, I've got the green. Those shutters. It's almost like a mid green. Well, the different sorts of greens. There's a sort of more of a, uh, a yellowy green there, more of a sort of bluey green over here on the left hand side. Oh, I've got that cobalt green. Let's use that. Again, I don't want it too dark because I do want to try and get in a few darker lines for the shutters, the little. horizontal lines of shutters, these two small windows, and then more of a a vibrant green for these. Okay. It is all right to use the pen after you've done a little bit of painting. So I've
I've got to include just a, f a few more details um, on the far side of the street where the, the door openings are for the shops here. And perhaps inside the cafe, there might be a few people, a waiter, maybe a few more people down here, like that. Let's colour in this part of the wall there. All right. And I'll just include a few more windows. Make sure I've got the right brush, the right pen. Um, a few more windows here. So there are a few windows in there. And then another level there and so on. I'm just spotting a few more lines just below the, the canopies as well, just to create the impression of the depth there and, and other, other parasols going down the street. Next, I'm going to now do the shadows. So another darker transparent layer over this, trying to still show the pen, the lines through that wash, even though this is the second layer and we're going darker, we're still gonna try and and uh, be able to see those, those lines coming through. I'll stick with a soft brush so as not to damage too much the, the, uh, the, the layer that I've done already, but now mix something a dark shadowy mix. So um, let's just mix that here. The light is coming from the left, top left, or I guess where we're standing, over our left shoulder, something like that. So for this shadow, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. To warm it up a bit, you could put in a bit of red. And the shadows need to be, starting at the back here, the shadows need to be a little bit darker well, a good bit darker than the roof and the walls. Okay, so see how dark that is. Contrast, that's really dark up there. Certainly very dark going down the, the right-hand side into the alleyway. You could also, also use very carefully, not too much, a little bit of neutral tint or Payne's Gray just to strengthen that mixture to make it a little bit darker still. but just be careful, it's not too dark. Now, ch check, the, uh, check my brush here, make sure there's not too much water, but just enough to lay down a controlled area like that, and we're not leaving, wanna Just mop up this a little bit. Just a little bit too much there. Right, on to the next building along. And the shadows just come down to the tops of the top windows. There we 
There we go. And then continue over to the right. Down this side, it's a lot darker. I'm going to strengthen my mixture with, with my neutral tint, a bit of burnt sienna, ultramarine blue. So really dark in here, creates a bit of contrast with that lighter building on that side. And then the shadows sort of go across the street. Left hand side then, the, the wall and the shadow, uh, th this wall, that building, a little bit of that because they're 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 on that side so that they're going to be in the shade and then the shadows going across the street still painting around the figures do the figures uh, after that same mixture um, but I'm gonna make it a little bit warmer here adding a bit of red my light red That's a little bit too grey. I should mix it, mix it here. That's better. Perhaps it's a little bit lighter as we come down to the bottom where there's a bit of reflected light coming off the pavement and hitting that side. Now this. Next building along. And then darker still. Darker still underneath. And it's quite complicated what, what's going on below those parasols. Lots of sort of almost geometric shapes, but I'm, I've just been a bit, bit uh, abstract with what's going on down there. A little bit of shadow on this one here. Just a light application, perhaps a bit more going across the street to the other side. And then the street itself. So it's quite dark up by the the uh, planters there and then it gets a little bit lighter pick up a bit of cobalt a little bit lighter in the middle then perhaps a tiny bit darker again a bit cooler on the right hand side and there's the shapes of these chimney tops shadows there creating that sort of jaunty edge Just use my brush marks to to emphasize the the line of slabs going down the uh, the street there. Perhaps just darken up the side of the 
parasol and a little bit of darkness. Underneath as well. Like that. Okay. Next, back to my smaller round brush, size eight for the figures. And darken up that menu. We'll just basically pull the painting together. So a little bit of flesh color, first of all. These figures, compared to, a few arms there, these figures compared to the last painting, it's summer, so their clothing, not so dark. Um, a lot of the people have got sort of fairly light upper clothing, so light, light, light. These more distant people here, light, well, he, <laughs> that, that's quite dark, she's quite, quite dark. But on the whole, a little bit lighter. However, these two people here, lightly clothed, but they're in the shadows. So I don't want to leave them white. Just pick up a little bit of a, it could be a cerulean blue or something like that, just to, just to darken it a little bit. Um, then maybe this figure next to it has something just slightly different, but a similar value. Menu, just darken that a little bit so it's not so bright. There we are. And maybe these distant figures here. Wearing blue jeans or something like that. Oh, we've got to get a little bit of shadow in there as well for those. This figure here is going to be quite dark, so neutral tint, a little bit of burnt sienna, just something dark. Don't worry too much about the, the colour. Don't want it, this, this surface is still quite damp, so I don't want it to bleed too much into that. But that, that should be all right. Shop windows and people here in the cafe, they're quite dark. So let's just make them a little bit darker. And then these shop windows underneath the blinds. So coming down. Maybe just a few little windows over there. If you've got a good point on your brush, then we can also, I could have done these with the pen, some of the finer architectural details, like there's some cabling going across the building. There's a downpipe just there. Let's make these two, the bottom bits, Just a little bit darker. Like that. Fairly simple. There are a few lines going across the parasol, just sort of like layers on that parasol. Try and get these in. There we 
There we go. You could put some strike, put some stripes on the uh, on one of these shop blinds here. So. Just makes it a little bit different. The, I'm um, going back to the shutters. I want to get in some fine little horizontal lines for the, the gaps um, within the shutters. So I'll, I could use a very small brush, but I'll go back to my pen again just to emphasize some of these lines and we we oh, I, I mentioned earlier about the the, the sequence of um, line and wash pen and wash do you do the the, the pen first and the wash that might be the more normal way or could you use pen after the wash well why not um, just to emphasize some of these lines so we've got that that, that balcony there for example We've got, now this brush, this pen is actually a little bit too thick. I'll go down to, this might be a little bit thinner. These shutters, we've got little tiny, little tiny horizontal marks there just to create the impression of those shutters. Maybe a few more horizontals. There's some more cabling there. We could emphasize the the bottom of that street. Also, it's important with, with the pen and wash to try and get the foreground objects in first so that when you go in behind and you're connecting these different shapes. So I was I was just strengthening that that bottom of the building there but I'm connecting these shapes okay but I don't want to truncate I don't want to cut, cut right across a figure so particularly if they're light so um, get these figures in that get the foreground objects in first maybe there's some things on the menu there menu of the day like that there's some writing on the parasol tavern. I don't normally go in for writing the names of buildings or cafes, so you can leave it fairly sort of abstract like that. Maybe a few more Few more verticals there. There could be some verticals also on this building, uh, the, the building on the left hand side, this wall on the left hand side, just to create the impression of those old walls and a few little stabs of some pot marks where you, you typically find it on buildings in, particularly in the Mediterranean, the uh, those sort of pot marks, maybe a few more over here as well. Just gives it a little bit more, more character, a little bit more interest. Uh, let's put a few more little windows down here and I think we're nearly done. Maybe a few more aerials on the buildings strengthen up the cables over there there we are i think we're done so i hope you like that two quite different line and wash pen and wash uh, paintings. So first one was uh, Trier, Germany. A dull, great, a, a dull, 
dreary day. I could have got a bit darker actually on that on that side there. So if you're having a go, those Patreon people out there, if you're having a go, try and make that a little bit darker. All right. So you're just strengthening the contrast of the darkness here and and in, and then creating more of an impression of light on the top of the canopy by making this darker. So that could be a bit darker, that could be a bit darker. But loads of people, loads of windows. This one's slightly easier from a window point of view and figures point of view, but a brighter day. And applying that second wash to to uh, get the the effect of the the shadows and and the light coming into the light coming into the the scene. And also with talking about the sequence of things, is it line first, wash second? Well, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's entirely up to you, but you can certainly strengthen things up, says he, still having a go. You know, you can strengthen things up after doing the wash by going in again with your pen. You know, the bottom of the plant is there. Connect these figures. Okay, and maybe a few more lines. Don't overdo the lines on the street. Otherwise, make it a little bit too fussy. Yeah, so thanks, thanks for watching. I'll catch up with you on the next demo.